Well, hey there guys, what's going on? I bring you another installment of our 2007 Dodge Charger. This car I picked up about three weeks ago from Copart. Uh, this car was listed as a flood car. So, digging further into the engine here, uh, went ahead and dropped the oil pan. A lot of you guys saw the previous video that I had up there of the mysterious hole in the oil pan. Uh, so we did find out what that mysterious hole was. Unfortunately, it wasn't the loader that caused the damage. It was a cylinder that was hydrolock, and it actually broke a rod. So let's take a look at the rod that it broke. So looking right here, we've got the piston and the rod. You can see right there that rod is completely sheared off. And here's the other end of it and absolutely crazy so basically what happened is water got in the cylinder and uh, that's what happened is that you can't compress liquid and this is the end result of when you try to compress liquid and when you run your car into some low-lying water luckily on the other hand the engine looks to be in good shape um, I think we can go ahead and save it. I already put another piston, new rod, and new bearings in it, and it was about 80 bucks, and that was a pretty good deal. So let's go underneath the car here, and I'll show you the bottom half of the engine. So looking up there, you guys, if you guys can look, so this is our rod that was actually broken, cylinder number eight there, and that would explain all the carnage that you guys saw on the oil pan here. Uh, but rotating the engine over, everything seems to be good. There doesn't seem to be any problems at all with this engine. Other than that, the engine obviously looks really, really good. Other than that, I pulled a few bearing caps on it. And uh, everything else is really, really good on it. I think overall we can definitely save this. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the new piston that I put in it. Okay, so looking down in cylinder number eight there, you can see it's the very last cylinder on the passenger side here. I went ahead and put a new piston in it. It's got a new rod, new bearings, new rings. So I had to go ahead and hone that cylinder. So if you look at the cylinder, it looks really good. Uh, these other two cylinders here, this one, if you look at it, had some evidence of some water in it. Um, I, did run the hone down in the cylinder here tried to clean it up a little bit the same thing with this one here uh, cylinder number two here no problems you'll see the rest of that engine is pretty crusty inside the daily there you got the, your MDS solenoids right here the engine pretty much works the same way that the Chevy engines do like the 5.3 the newer 6 liters and the 6.2s uh, this actually has cylinder deactivation. Crusher, they call it MDS. You know, like the Chevys, they refer to it as active fuel management, DOD, displacement on demand. So, you, know, you can see the solenoids right here. But, you know, this is a much more reliable system than the Chevy engines use. So, I'm going to go ahead and show you the cylinder head that came off of this. So, we've got our cylinder head here. And as you guys can see, you know, this uses a dual plug setup on each cylinder. So this car uses 16 spark plugs. So we got cylinder 2. Now as you can see, the crustiness. Cylinder 4. Cylinder 6. And obviously cylinder number 8. Cylinder number 8 is the one we had issues with. But obviously you can look at the cylinders. All the valves look perfect. And uh, all we need to do is clean up these uh, crusty ass, whatever you want to refer to those things as, stalactites. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's where we're at. So, basically, you know, I'm just waiting on a few other parts for this car. And we're going to go ahead and reassemble it. The biggest pain in the ass in this car here was the stupid differential right there. I mean, obviously I had to go ahead and 
jack up the engine on both that and I had to jack it up quite high and once I was able to jack it up I was able to rotate that and get that stupid thing out of there other than that it's pretty straightforward you know but you have to take apart the whole freaking suspension to get these stupid ass drive shafts out of it so but hey it is what it is you know I bought it and that's what I'm stuck with so you know the key thing is I got to keep this repair somewhat on the budget side and right now I'm probably right around 400 bucks into this I did just notice too the rear trailing arm on the driver's side is broken and obviously you know that's due to copart loaders picking these things up moving them around but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that I really appreciate you guys watching appreciate all the new subscribers here and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one see ya